Right. So here's another really awesome chord. I think the grooviest chord I've ever played. So it's basically, I guess, taken from guitar players. Uh, perhaps Jimi Hendrix would have popularized this chord the most. It's actually quite easy to play on the guitar. If you take E, you just basically, it's easier to play than probably even the major chord or the seventh chord because your hand just stays there, you know. So it sounds like this. So what are we doing here? We're taking a seventh chord and then adding a sharp 9. How do we get a sharp 9 now? On I'm on the key of E. So what is a 9 again? A 9 is a second played one octave higher. So F sharp. But now sharp 9 means take that 9 one more step even higher. There. So it's really, really weird. You're having a major third, what appears as a major chord, but then a sharp nine, which in disguise is actually a minor third. It just sounds awesome together, right? And if you just play that note in between, you see how horrible that sounds, you know, when you play it there. So it's all about where you space these notes, also known as voicing. Okay, so you go root, this is how I'm playing it on the piano. It's very easy for me. Root, third, seventh flat, and then the sharp nine. You may argue, why are you not playing the B? Well, you could, but then B is just an extra note. You don't really need it, you know? So. You could add it. I kind of prefer without the B, so. E7 sharp 9 and this is a very nice chord if you're using it in a funky context or in a blues context you know Pretty much that entire chord throughout the blues. You could even use it for a funky perspective, maybe. Right? Sounds really nice. So uh, the way I use it is I just use it in very groovy music. I don't think I've used it in the sadder stuff. Well, you could. This is still a replacement for the dominant chord. So in a sense, you take E. E could very much resolve to the tonic, which could be A minor. But in this case, we are using it in a bluesy... I really like the E going to the B. I also like to kind of stack the same uh, sharp 9 chord and then move in fifths. So you do E, B. But with the B you can even add like an augmented flavor or a sharp 5. Very bluesy. See, that's the sharp nine as well as the augmented fifth. I use that also at the end of a blues uh, blues turnaround, you know. So da 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 ba ba bum. Okay, so it has all sorts of flavors. That's the sharp nine, and this is the augmented fifth. 
okay so in a nutshell this chord could either be played as a normal e7 sharp 9 jimi hendrix style perhaps play that rhythm ah sounds really dirty and uh, intense right okay the other way you could use it is with the uh, what do you call it with the augmented sound so that augmented with the sharp nine lot of color so you can really go back to the tonic in a very exciting way maybe let's play some pop stuff add that just as a connection that's the chord or just use it in a bluesy context or a funk context So this is about the seven sharp nine, or you can do the seven sharp nine with the sharp five as well, right? So that's with the sharp five. That's without the sharp five. It's just a normal E seven sharp nine at the top. And the magic of this is how there is a major third and a minor third working together. That's usually, you know, really. generally wrong you know imagine in a band a guitarist plays a major chord and the keyboardist plays a minor chord that's actually wrong no one would like that but i don't know how this chord just does it you know okay moving on <laughs> 